This week on the Auto Car Show, Hyundai's sub 4 meter sedan, the Accent, takes on its rivals, the Honda Amaze and the Maruti Suzuki Desire. We try to make sense of Mercedes's monstrous GL63 AMG. And Hormuz tells you what's buzzing in the Indian auto industry in school. So you can think of sub 4 meter sedans as the perfect example of evolution of the automotive species to survive the Indian environment. These cars promise you the best of two worlds, the compactness of a hatchback while offering you the space and practicality of a sedan. The first of the species was Maruti Suzuki's Swift Desire and last year it was battling with Honda's entry, the Amaze, with a strong diesel motor. And now we have another big splash in the segment from Hyundai. We have with us the new Accent in its diesel guise and the other two cars also in the diesel variants to see which one has the edge now. Has Hyundai done their homework and got it right? Let's find out. If this contest was about looks, the desire would have a really hard time. All three cars here are hatches with boots slapped on. The Maruti though makes it very apparent that the boot is an afterthought. The Honda's Amaze has a nicely integrated design and at profile it looks particularly good. The Accent's design is the most fluid and natural. However, this smart sedan doesn't have as much road presence as the others as it is the narrowest of the three cars here. The biggest car though is the Maruti, is the tallest, the longest and the widest. However, when you pop the boot open, you'll find that its 316 litres of space is tiny and it's the least of the three cars here. The Maruti can also boast of the longest wheelbase, but in terms of space, the back seat disappoints. However, the seat itself is generous and offers soft cushioning. The front seats are also well proportioned and offer a commanding view out. The dashboard design is simple and it is well made. The beige color adds a nice premium touch to the cabin. However, the contrasting black and beige buttons on the center console look a bit weird. When it comes to premiumness, the Amaze doesn't have the best cabin either. The dashboard looks cheap and plasticky. The music system and manual air conditioning unit look old and as though they were built on a really tight budget. And its equipment list is quite sparse. However, the driving position is absolutely spot on. It's snug yet commanding and the backseat experience is even better. Every time you step into the backseat of the Amaze, you will be wowed. It happens to me. I mean, just look at the model Nero on offer. It has a bit of a width advantage in this group, uh, but preferably a two-seater despite having a nice flattish floor here. Uh, that aside, what you will really appreciate is the seat itself great under thigh support, the seat back also nicely shaped and well at the perfect angle for me. And like the desire, the Amaze doesn't get remote opening for the boot. Although at 400 litres, the boot space is really good. But it's the Accent that has the best boot. Its 407 litres is a bit more than the Amaze, but crucially the boot is shaped better and it is easier to store luggage in it as well. And when it comes to the back seat, the Accent isn't too shabby either. So when you compare it to the Amaze, the Accent's back seat does get edged out just by that little bit in every which way. Whether it's under thigh support, knee room, the width or well, even the airiness of the cabin. But nonetheless, this is a very comfortable, nice back seat to be in. The Accent also offers a charging point for the rear passengers and dedicated aircon vents, which could do a better job of cooling for the rear passengers. But when you step into the front seat, the Hyundai just bowls you over. Now this cabin really manages to hit the sweet spot here. It's got a great combination of a cool young design, good quality materials and the equipment list is just simply large. Okay, 
Here goes. The top end SX O variant has automatic climate control, rear parking sensors and a rear view camera. There is a cool glove box, a 1GB hard drive for your music, Bluetooth, USB, aux in and a CD player. It also has keyless entry and go and electric folding mirrors. And what's really impressive is that it is slightly cheaper than the Amaze VX and only slightly more expensive than the Desire ZDI. And on the practical front, space isn't in short supply either. Now let's see what these three are like on the road. All three cars have very diverse motors, from Hyundai's 1.1-litre three-cylinder engine to the one and a half liter all-aluminum four-cylinder motor from Honda. At 71 bhp, the Hyundai has the least power, and its 18.3 kilograms of torque is also the lowest. Meanwhile, the Amaze, with its 98.6 bhp of power and 20.4 kilograms of torque, is the beefiest motor here. And treading the middle ground is the 1.3 liter four cylinder motor from Maruti. This motor packs 74 bhp of power and 19.5 kilograms of torque. But when you stack these three against the clock, it's the Maruti that's the quickest car here. Whether it's accelerating from standstill or in gear roll ons, the Maruti outpaces the other two. But behind the wheel, it does feel a bit lacking. City speeds the turbo life can be a bit frustrating. Because of the sudden burst of torque from the turbocharger, it takes some getting used to to drive this Maruti smoothly. That means it will be a bit more work, especially when compared to Honda's ID-Tech motor. The strength of this motor is its drivability. With all that displacement, you get a lot of torque that's available low down in the rev range, which means driving this around in city traffic is really not a problem. Power trails off past 4000 RPM, but it is still a motor with great all-round usability. However, it has one serious problem. Downside to this motor is the fact that it is just so loud. This, however, is one count on which the Hyundai really scores. What takes your breath away in the accent is the refinement. You would just not feel like this is a three-cylinder diesel motor once it's cruising. It's so silent and so smooth. This might not be the quickest motor here, but it is definitely very drivable. What lets this motor down is that it doesn't have that zing when you're really pushing it hard because the top end is really a bit strained. But how comfortable are these cars to be in and to drive? Well, all three cars use the tried and tested McPherson struts at the front and a compact twist beam setup at the rear. But when it comes to ride and handling, all three cars are actually pretty close. But they have their own pluses and minuses. The Honda, for instance, feels the most planted and sure-footed. The steering is direct too, making it the most confidence-inspiring on winding roads or on the highway. But at low speeds, the stiff suspension and the weedy 14-inch tyres means a lot of the bumps can be felt in the cabin. And a lot of road noise also filters into the poorly insulated cabin. The design makes an impressive point with its suspension setup. The Maruti has an edge here as it wears the widest rubber on big 15-inch rims. The ride quality of the Desire is such that it manages to softly pad over broken roads and bumps and potholes, but at the same time, it doesn't get tossed around by them either. The Desire also feels very nippy, ever willing to change directions and ready to have some fun. The steering feels well weighted and is the most involving of the lot here. So while the Maruti has the best ride and handling balance, the Hyundai isn't disappointing either. 
The accent wears the optional 15-inch rims, but it's the work under the skin that feels so impressive. It's really a credit to Hyundai that with every new car, they're getting better and better in terms of dynamics. And that's true even of the accent over the Grand i10. This car just feels more controlled while remaining quite plush to ride. Although a little bit more firmness to the suspension wouldn't hurt. Driving the accent fast won't be all that much of a hassle, although you will find that the suspension does have a bit of squishiness. The accent steering is also vague and a bit unpredictable, which eats into the confidence at high speeds. So finally, let's take a look at their fuel efficiency figures. The small displacement motor of the Accent offers the best fuel efficiency in the city. The Honda, despite having the biggest displacement motor, comes in second, while the Maruti is third. On the highway, the Accent returns 20.3 km per litre, but is edged out by the Honda's 20.8. Meanwhile, the Maruti comes in third here as well. So, finally, which one of these cars comes out on top? So, how do things stack up? Well, I'll start with the oldest car here, the Desire. Which, despite its seniority, can teach these youngsters a thing or two when it comes to ride and handling. And it's backed up by a nice punchy and frugal diesel motor, has some nice details on the inside too. But, where it really lacks is the fact that when it comes to space, it doesn't have all that much in the boot or in the back seat. Especially when you compare it to something like the Honda where the engineers have really carved out so much space from such a small footprint and you can witness that in the backseat. Its other strong point is its tractable and drivable diesel motor. But where Honda have gone a bit too far is on cutting down the feel-good factor inside the cabin. This car just ends up feeling a bit too cheap for the price range it's in. And on top of that, the refinement is really quite disappointing. And that's where the Hyundai offers a surprise. This three-cylinder motor just feels incredibly smooth and silent. Sure, the accent may not surpass the others in specific areas, but it shadows them so closely. For instance, this motor offers good drivability, ride quality is plush, and it is a neat handler. And then when you get on the inside, you'll find a nice, smart, well-equipped cabin with all kinds of equipment that you would desire. And when you package all of that together into one form, what you get here is the accent, the winner of this Comparo. Is Mercedes's GL63 AMG the perfect AMG for India? Find out after the break.